Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. Welcome in to another edition of Golic and Wingo. Glad you're with us on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. We are presented by Progressive Insurance, and all phone guests will join us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And speaking of the guests, we have got a loaded show. Yes, we do. Uh, Bradley Chubb will join us at 745, who could be the first defensive player off the board. A lot of people, including the Broncos' Von Miller, apparently very high on what Bradley Chubb out of North Carolina State, defensive end, may be able to do at the NFL level. Mel Kuyper Jr. will join us at 8 o'clock. 9 o'clock, ESPN NFL insider and occasional NBA sideline reporter. Adam Schefter will be here as well. Plus, we've got new Broncos quarterback Case Keenum coming your way, as well as P.J. Carlissimo, our fine ESPN NBA analyst. Mike Golick, Mike Golick Jr., Trey Wingo here. We are wearing things that we would normally not wear on the show today, but it is for a very specific reason. Yes, it is. So if you're on ESPN News, you can obviously see them. If radio, you can't. So, uh, uh, my son Mike, you will explain why we're wearing these pretty cool t-shirts. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Stephanie Walsh, who works here at ESPN, who Trey, I know you know, uh, uh, pretty well here and has, has been around a long time. Well, her son Silas was diagnosed last spring with T-cell leukemia and is going to be likely undergoing chemotherapy treatments until 2020. Now, you know, it's a, obviously a, a hard time for anyone, but Silas is a, a, an upbeat kid, a guy who, kid who really loves superheroes. And so he decided to make the time work for him and actually started making these t-shirts these are, are his own drawings of some of his favorite superheroes that you're seeing modeled by the Golik and Wingo staff here uh, today myself dad Trey and everyone behind the glass and so Silas has put these up on a website that we're going to share the link to that uh you know certainly he gets some kickback from but get, just gets a chance to share the things that he loves Absolutely. with everyone else and, and we figure we could share him around here to show that you know we're all big fans of his work and the stuff that he's doing right now and that we're supporting him in this battle you know it, it takes a lot of people and i'm sure for him and his mom and and their family this has been a trying time so there's also a, a going to be a link and i think we're going to share this with the golic and wingo twitter account to not only where you can get these shirts and any other uh, of the products that he's put his superhero logos on, but also to the GoFundMe page that can help support Silas and Stephanie and, and their family during this time for them. So be sure to check that out. Allie's going to tweet it from the uh, the Twitter account here, but it just by all accounts, sounds like an awesome kid. Tim Cronin over in, in IT kind of passed the word along to me that this is uh, you know something that he had been doing. So wanted to show Silas that we're you know we're here to support him during the show, and we appreciate the lift on uh, all the great gear. Absolutely. Look, uh, as you said, I've known Stephanie forever. And the other thing is, the shirts are awesome. Yeah, they, they are, are awesome. awesome. They're very cool. And you got to remember, this is a seven year old doing yeah, this. You know, exactly. seven years old and, and making up these designs that we're putting on the shirts. And listen, what they're going to go through, you know, we, 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 everybody has been touched by this in some form or another. So if we can put a smile on this young man's face, you know, and, uh, and help in any way along the way. We're certainly, certainly here to do it for one of our teammates here. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. And you can check out on Facebook. Silas Rocket is, uh, what he goes by on his Facebook page and when he's selling the shirts. How but, great is that name? Yeah, oh, that's it's, pretty cool. How huh? great is that yeah. name? Baller name. And by, yeah. by all accounts, and, and Stephanie does a great job on the page of giving updates on Silas throughout this. And, you know, the kid just <clears> basically <throat> runs the show at the hospital where he's getting treatment. Everyone, everyone knows him. He's a big, gregarious kid. And so, no, no, no surprise that he'd be the one giving us a gift during yeah, a time correct. when he's the one battling. So be sure to check that out. Support Silas and Stephanie in any way you can. And pick up some sweet gear, man. If you want to look good, Silas got you covered. There he you does. Go. He, he has the artistic flair, just like his mother, I should say. No question about it. So Silas, Stephanie, we are with you. Thank you for Absolutely. these shirts. And we will wear them with pride. All right, let's get started. It's time for... Off the Top. Whether you like it or not, it's just beginning. With Golik and Wingo. All right, we start in the NBA playoffs. Raptors, Celtics, and Pelicans all won Tuesday to take 2 nothing series leads. Teams with 2 nothing leads in the best of seven series go on to win, let's see, one, two, three, 93% of the time. A lot. So you're off to a good start. Yeah, and if you're the Celtics, it's even better than that. They're 35-0 and when leading a best of seven series. Is that good? Yeah, 2 to nothing. Yeah, that's pretty good with what they're doing. DeMar DeRozan, he scores 37. A big night for him. Uh, he and his best buddy Kyle Lowry have a little fun together. You can't wait to hear that one. It's, be, it's pretty interesting. Milwaukee and Boston. I actually picked Milwaukee in this series. Oh, yeah. And I tell you, Giannis and... I think I did, too. I think and, we all did. Yeah, I think we all did. And Chris Middleton, they've been fine. 23 of 31 between the two of them. 
55 points, 30 and 25 respectively, but not enough. They're actually shooting better than Boston in the series, but Boston is is turning the ball over more, getting more second chance points and points off turnovers uh, as well with what they're doing. Terry Rozier, big game. Jalen Brown, monster game for Boston. Interesting stuff going on with Terry's Rozier and Eric Bledsoe. <laughs> we'll get to as well. And then I, I, I also, I think I got this one wrong. I got I the Pelicans going to Portland and taking both games there. Anthony Davis being a stud as he normally is. Drew Holiday, 33 points. He's doing it on both sides of the court. So, uh, those are your, that was your, your NBA action last night wasn't, wasn't really, you know, edgy or came down to the the wire or anything like no, that. No, yeah, it was it was yeah. pre- it was pretty blasé. Enjoy the show. Yeah. It was yeah. you know what that we have only the Celtics and the Bucks to blame because in this grouping of games right. they gave us maybe the best game of the early run of the playoffs so overtime. far in game 1. So with that as the standard, this fell well short, but we still got plenty of entertainment because the NBA's got great characters. And not only that, but yeah. I think for all three of us that that picked the Bucks over the Celtics, I think we need to say I've made a huge mistake. Yeah. And we'll move on. Because yeah. the Celtics have never lost a 2 nothing lead. No, they have said. Off the top. Right, we continue the top. off the top. This is an amazing story, and it continues to be an amazing story. The Golden Knights beat the Kings one nothing Tuesday to sweep their first ever playoff series. Vegas is the third team all-time from the NHL, NBA, or MLB to complete a four-game sweep to win its first ever playoff series. The other two, Mike, you were there, the 1914 Braves. I was. The Braves, and- they did it against the Philadelphia Athletics, and I was certainly there for when the Penguins did it in 1970 against the Oakland Seals. There you go. Who doesn't remember the Oakland Seals? Well, the Oakland Seals were named because the old minor league team in the, in the Bay Area was the San Francisco Seals. That's where Joe DiMaggio first uh, uh, got got some attention. Listen, can't say enough about what the Golden Knights are doing. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury and, and the goal. I mean, he's just been fantastic. By the way, fewest goals scored in a sweep. Best of seven all time. So the Golden Knights are setting all kinds of records. They set the record here as well. They only scored seven goals in this sweep. But before that, it was a mighty Ducks in 03 that scored nine goals. So setting all kinds of records. I'm sure they'd like to not set that one anymore and score more goals than that. But uh, what what a monster series for them and a great story that continues. We always hear the phrase, too, in, in sports, especially for guys in their rookie year. After a certain point in the season, you're no longer a rookie. We're getting to that point now where we have to start looking at the you're Golden no Knights and expansion. Saying, you're yeah. no longer expansion, right, and now right, what right. is that? What is the ceiling like for this team That's in the good. NHL playoffs? What is this group fully capable of? And can anyone get me a lead on some Oakland Seals gear? Yeah. I need that desperately. That is awesome, Oakland Seals. Give me some Oakland you. Seals sweaters yeah. there for sure. Now, Ooh. a big reason that they've done what they've done is because of their goaltending situation. Yeah. Look, they picked up Mark Andre Fleury in the expansion draft. He was a big part of winning three Stanley Cups. Yes, he was but with the Pittsburgh Penguins, Decent. so that certainly helps. He now has 66 career playoff wins, and he passes Dominic Hasek, who had 65, for 11th in NHL history. So, listen, what do we say so much about the NHL playoffs? You ride that hot goaltender. Yeah. They have got that hot goaltender right now, a guy who's done it more than once. Capitals get a win. There are a couple other games. They get a win over the Blue Jackets. They still are down in that series, two, game to, uh, two games to one of the Blue Jackets, and the Jets shut out the Wild 2 nothing. Jets up 3-1. In that series. Off the top. All right, we continue off the top, and ladies and gentlemen, he's human. 3 2 pitch again. And Mookie swings and he hammers one to left center field. This ball's back. This ball's gone. A home run for Mookie Betts. His 12th career leadoff home run, and the Red Sox jump on Otani for a 1 0 lead. That the call on WEEI is one of 400 home runs that Mookie Betts hit in that game. <laughs> As our guy, Shohei Otani. Finally did not show out. Lasted only two innings, had a blister on his pitching hand, and that was a leadoff home run to start the game against the So Red he Sox. still has hit more home runs, right? Three. They're giving up three. Two. He's given up yes. two. It was the, bl- the blister really uh, took away his control. He had averaged 14 pitches per inning before this. Needed 66 pitches to get through two innings. By my math, that average is 33 in inning, if my math is correct. Well done. That. Proud you of know, you. We'll sit there as football players, you and I going through injuries, we're in the high, and I heard you talking about this. We're in the hockey playoffs. They're the toughest players in the world. Or, you know, I, I, I know I'll be waiting for the tweets from my, some of the toughest athletes in the world. Oh, yeah. I know rugby way. guy will come I out know, of the woodwork I, for I, this I one. It. Some wrestling it. guy somewhere. Some it's of the fine. toughest guys in all of sports. Baseball, listen, we both had our fun with it with injuries, kind of goofy injuries and stuff. And you sit there and you think, blister. 
I ain't mocking a blister on the pitching fingers nope. of a pitcher. I mean, and what you need for that pitching hand and the way you're throwing and the, 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 the friction on your fingers and a blister and how that can mess it up. So good they got him out of there, let that thing heal, and let him keep going. Maybe a blessing in disguise, too, because it had been a long and rough first couple of innings there, and so when you've got the blister as the backdrop for a reason to get him out there. Just get out. Get Pull him, the cord. Get him out of there. Maintain the confidence that you've been building. This wasn't a start that he was supposed to make anyway. We remember this is because a game against the Royals got postponed. Yes. that he was supposed to start into. So just end a bad situation before it gets going so we can still play the song and feel good. And it's not the first time we've seen blister situations. Rich Hill of the Dodgers right. had some issues. I think Aaron Sanchez of the Blue Jays. And you want to go way back, Al Leiter, uh, when he was still pitching, had all kinds of blister issues. They had to get the pickle brine out. I love the pickle brine. Yeah, That's fantastic. Absolutely. Good for cramp, cramping up and, and saying Eagles hydrated. against the Cowboys, and, 2000 season opener. And yeah. good for blisters. Blisters. All right, we got to give Mookie Betts really quick some love here. Yeah. Now, the, 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 uh, the Red Sox destroyed uh, uh, the Angels in this game. Mookie Betts recorded his third career three-home run game Tuesday, tying Ted Williams for the most in Red Sox history. Here's the kicker. Wait, wait. wait let me just let's let's repeat that. Yeah. Whenever you do something, when you tie Ted Williams for the most something in Red Sox history, you're winning. Yes, you are. Oh, I, I, thought you were about, I thought you were about to tweet that. No, no, no. That's, yeah. I'll do that later. <laughs> Could you repeat again. that again? Like, yeah, one more time. <laughs> I'll say it slow so you can type it out. His third career three home run game tying Ted Williams for the most in Red Sox history. Here's the kicker. It took Ted Williams 1,863 games to do that. It took Mookie Betts 523 games so he had to do it. that. He halved, halved it. it. He, he way more than halved it. Wow. That, you, we're, we're talking about he, he thirded it. Thirded he, it. He, whatever it did, it did. It, 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 oh, wow. It, 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 so it, words it, it, and numbers both just going out the window yeah. right now. We're did, punting on all of did it. Did you tweet that? Not yet, but right. I will. Well, Maybe well, skip that last part. I'll get yeah. it to you in the break, and then, and then we'll figure it out. But again, even though it's a rough start and he has the blister, Shohei, you're still our guy. I want you. And the more you tell us not Make to play sure, that drop, please tweet in and say you don't like that. We're playing that drop. Yeah, right. And we'll finish up. Off the top. Uh, speaking of confidence Ooh. and lack thereof, Giancarlo Stanton, the struggle is real. Going 0 for 4 while striking out twice against the Marlins in the Yankees' 9-1 to loss. Stanton should just be playing on the road at this point. He, at home, in eight home games, is hitting 086 with 20 strikeouts. He didn't record his 20th home strikeout last season until the 18th home game. He got this in his 8th home game. According to Elias, that's the most strikeouts any player's ever had through his first 8 home games in a season. Not the start you want, and from what we understand, he still doesn't may not have the furniture in his apartment. Problems? I mean, just a lot of problems. I tell you what, you need one piece of furniture in your apartment right now, and that's the bathtub, because there's only one way to break out of this slump. you got to remind yourself what's important in life. you got to go home, and you got to go fill a bathtub with money and just take a bath in it right now if you're John Carlos Stanton. Because that's about the <laughs> only thing you, bath. That is about the only thing you've got going for you, is that there are no good days and bad days, just paydays in your world if you're John Carlos Stanton, but that's not going to help the masses outside of your apartment building in New York. York. Look, man, everybody has their thing to, for slump busting. Maybe his is a treasure bath. There you go. Because he can literally have a treasure bath. Did, oh, you, yeah. did you just make that up? Is no, that this, a thing? There's an old Mel Brooks movie called The History of the World Part 1. Yeah, I've seen it. And the I Roman just remember. It says it's time for a treasure bath, and they just he lies in the tub, and they just throw all oh, the Oh, I, 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 wish, I wish you would have made bath! that up. I That's wish good. you would have made that up because okay, it really is up. good. It was totally me. Uh, yeah, wow, totally it's, incredible. Me, 100%. it's incredible. He needs to take a treasure bath. You look, so, look, you get a treasure bath, you wipe off all the bad stuff, and just remind it that, like you're, that you are resplendent in glory and monetary design. That's a great idea. There if I go. tried to take a treasure bath, I wouldn't even be able to cover up all the bad parts. Yeah. <laughs> well, The tub well. would be pretty low. Just just borrow uh, some of his treasure. You'll yeah. be fine. I don't want to know where All you, you need to dime. There you Ayo. go. <laughs> Let's sound off on the NBA playoffs last night. It's brought to you by ADT. Are you considering home security? Well, consider this. For 140 years, ADT has helped stop more crime than any other home security company. Visit ADT.com to learn more. Okay, Junior, you said it a few moments ago that maybe the games haven't been that entertaining so far in round one of the playoffs because they've not really been close except for the first game between the Celtics uh, and the Bucks, which had two crazy threes, which sent it to overtime. First Portland and uh, uh, New Orleans game was pretty good as well. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, but, but you said that hasn't been that great. However... The post-game press conferences oh have been really, really good. For example, DeMar DeRozan had, what, 37 points last night? In yes, the he did. So he was talking about it, and as he was talking about a very good game for him, 
For some reason, he was interrupted by teammate Kyle Lowry. I just let the game come to me, the Florida game. Um, I go based off that. You know, these days, it's not like I got to have a mindset to go out there and, you know, I got to score 30, 40 points. Um, I go out there and play just aggressive. Just had 37. What you mean? I didn't go out there saying, let me score but, 30 tonight. But like, I'm saying, you had 37. Don't say it. Like but I'm mean. saying, I didn't go out there but saying. But all I'm saying, I'm, you can't say that when you had 37. Listen, what I'm trying to explain, though, what I'm bro. Saying is, I understand what you're saying. But you no, you don't. Let me finish. I didn't even. Can I? Leave. Um. Like I said, I didn't go out there planning to score 37 points. I went out there to be aggressive, and with my aggressiveness, came up 37 points. Every person <laughs> who has a significant other has had that discussion yeah. about something. Correct. Right? Yeah. I mean, I heard that. I said, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it just sounds like a couple. Can I finish? Yeah. Can I finish? I, I mean, I, Can, I, did you, you need to just that let me finish. Will you listen to me? Can I finish what I'm saying? You're missing the point. Yeah. That was fantastic. Loved it. It confirmed everything I thought I knew about Kyle Lowry just by looking at him, too. Like, Kyle Lowry looks like that little kid in the back of class that's always got something slick to say. Yes. Like, that's exactly the demeanor that he carries through life, and I'm glad it's what he brought to that press conference. Because it reminded us that, to your point, celebrities, they're just like us. Just like us. They fight, they bicker, they love Mm -hmm. each other at the core of it. There you go. You always tend to fight a little harder with the people you love the most. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing you need to understand, that is, DeMar and Kyle are boys. There's no no question about it. And this was Kyle after the game as well, even though what he says, take it with a grain of salt. DeMar is an unbelievable player, um, all-NBA, um, MVP-type caliber player. Um, you know, 14 from 23 is efficient, 3 for 6 from the, the three-point line, 6 for 8 from 3, but also 5 rebounds, 4 assists, and some good defense. Um, you know, he's just grown as a player, and every year I've been with him, he just continues to get better and uh, I mean, I don't care. He's my friend. I don't care. He still sucks as a friend. But um, as a basketball player, he's pretty, really, he's really good and just getting better every single year. And um, when I'm not shooting the ball like that, it doesn't matter. I mean, if I'm not shooting the ball well, the guy, he held it down for our team, 37 points. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, that, that's can, we just sign, take, can we take this show on the road for the entire it's postseason? It's a sign of true friendship. You can only go so far saying nice things yes. before you, okay, and that meter goes off in your head, okay, I've gone too long, have to throw a dig in there, have to rip them somehow, then I'll go back to being nice again. That's that's the true sign of good friendship. I'm telling you, this is a great PR campaign by these guys, too, because what do we talk about going to the postseason? All we do with these two guys is say this backcourt doesn't get it done in the postseason. And right. by that, we mean they don't beat LeBron, which they have in common with a lot of people over the course of the last Last 15 years and so what do you do get people to like you a little bit get the buddy cop thing going right here maybe get an ad out of this one i think it can all be what part of turning around the narrative this? what ad could work with with kind of the bickering too back and forth we'd have to think of that what, what i feel what like you could get a sour patch kids deal out of this sweet sour and gone you get a little both of that a little re- left and right twix maybe yeah twix oh, right bar oh, right twix oh. left twix seems to make the I'm most telling you, listen, most if you guys, guys. need way, an way to go to your candy strength by well the way. <laughs> nothing else <laughs> hey, what, right what, food. what candy could i not even food candy just sugar coated Good goodness point. is the one thing you were thinking of. It was already on my brain, so it was an easy bridge to uh, There's make a shocker. Right there. By the way, you know who was on Eric Bledsoe's brain? Who's that? Terry Rozier. Mm. Now, Eric Bledsoe, of course, uh, we all thought that the Bucks would do better in this series, but history says they won't because the Celtics have never lost a series in which they're up two games to none. And Terry Rozier uh, for the <laughs> Celtics has had two games, uh, 20 points or more, I think 23 and 21 in the first two games. So Eric Bledsoe of the Bucks was asked about just how well Terry Rozier has been playing. Terry Rozier has gotten off to a, a strong start to this series. No turnovers in 78 minutes. How personally do you take that matchup? Who? Terry Rozier. I don't even know who that is. Okay. okay. Yeah. Stop that now. Yeah. I, I mean, do you realize how ridiculous you sound? I, I Apparently mean, it, not. It just sounds dumb. Maybe okay? he didn't actually know. I mean, that, it, it's just, I mean, seriously, it is just so foolish to say. Because Rozier, good for him, when, because of course, what's the first thing you do when that happens if you're a reporter is you go run to Rozier and say, hey, you know what Eric Bledsoe said? He doesn't even know who you are. He doesn't even know who you are. But exactly right. Should, and, we, and, should we help Eric with Terry Rozier? Well, really quick, what, what yeah. Rozier said in response when he was asked about it, Rozier wanted no part of it. He said, I'm not feeding into that. There you good go. for him. Attaboy. That's the right answer. And Bledsoe, you've got to be kidding me. Not only are you getting smoked on the court, but now you sound ridiculous in the postgame. And let's, let's, let's do a public service. Okay. Let's help 
Eric Bledsoe. Oh, okay. All right. Terry William Rozier the third was born on March seventeenth, nineteen ninety four. Uh huh. He started Shaker Heights High School in Shaker Heights, Ohio. Oh, yes. Very nice Cleveland suburb. Oh, absolutely. Graduating is. in twenty twelve. In his senior year, he averaged twenty five point six points, six and a half boards, four and a half assists, four point seven steals per game, leading Shaker Heights to a twenty one and three record and taking him to the regional semifinal. He was the 74th overall in the 2012 ESPN U Top 100 players, went to Louisville, played mm-hmm. for a few years. One of his best friends in high school was a guy named Jimmy Pope, who happened to be my son's roommate Look for two at the years at, Joe's here. So, at Georgetown. So there you go, Eric. Look at the connection. Now you know everything you need to know about Terry Rozier. I don't even know what that is. Well, you can't seriously. say that anymore, can you? I, I mean, seriously, is, is that a ridiculous comment to make or what? We just need to get Terry Rozier into it, but we need to get him with Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan so we can learn to talk some bleep, because they run over with that be like, I can tell you exactly who I am, and I just started reading the stat line when he was guarding me. Be like, listen, what happened to you last game, bum? I tell you what, man, if I, if I, if I were uh, uh, Eric Bledsoe's teammates, I'd be handing him a bio really quick. Yeah. This is who he is. Yeah. You better get to know him even more, because he knows you, and he knows to go up and get, you know, do what the against you. We'll just get on Jimmy Pope, who was his teammate in high school, there and my, my son's roommate. <laughs> there you go. With Georgetown. He'll break down everything we need to know. Jimmy Pope, uh, we'll get to him on to talk about Terry Rozier. Also played for the main Red Claws, by the way, before he went up to the Boston Celtics. Well, see, there so you go. Oh, is bonus, J- is Jimmy Rozier. Pope the new Alex Periano? Yeah, he my is. Column. Jimmy Pope is the, the main man. Red Claws? That's an awesome nickname. It's a very good nickname. And right? I under- completely understand why. Lobster. Yeah, but right. that is awesome. Folks, I, I have some bad news. We have conducted an internal investigation here at Golik and Wingo, and we've come some with some exclusive audio related to the star of the baseball season, and sadly for you, you'll hear it next. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Winning at sports and at sports broadcasting means changing things up. Just like La Quinta Inns and Suites is changing up their look. A renovated lobby that's so contemporary it even makes Gold look look cool. Yes, it does. And a totally updated fitness center that even has Wingo feeling like a workout. I'm ripped. Plus, plenty of comfortable spaces to hang out. Yeah, this La Quinta look definitely has a vibe of victory. So you can just relax, refresh, and get ready for your next big meeting. Prepare to win at business with La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. All right, we continue here on Golden Wing on ESPN Radio and ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoa performance line. Uh, that was Terry Rogier talking about mm-hmm. uh, what's going on. And Eric Bledsoe had said after game two, I don't know who the bleep Terry Rogier is. Part of that was because whether he was joking or not, Terry Rogier, when talking about Eric Bledsoe, said Drew Bledsoe. After game after one. After game one. Yeah, now, Drew, we don't yeah. know if he was trolling him. Right, or, you know, Drew right, Bledsoe, right. a very important figure in Patriots Boston history. Uh, exactly. Whatever. So we don't know exactly what that is, but, but obviously yeah. Eric took it the wrong there's way. There's the context uh, of that, but the bottom line is Rogier's having himself a couple of games, and a number of that, uh, a bit of that is on Bledsoe. So, I just don't think that that's the time for any kind of a smart alecky type of a comeback when uh, you're getting handled on the court. I'm telling you, Terry Rozier needs to take advantage of this. You have a chance to stunt, and now you have a chance to stunt on somebody uh, right now in Eric Bledsoe. And take advantage of that outfit troll. We see it all the time in the NBA. Show up to the next game wearing a Drew Bledsoe t-shirt. Okay. It's that easy. Okay, you mentioned it, and I'm going to. If you have not seen yeah. Terry Rozier, did you see this, Mike? Terry Rozier during the presser after the game. Check it out. I actually took a picture of it when I was watching it. It was interesting. Terry Rozier has a a top on that is half sweat jacket, half sport coat. Half which way? Hot dog or hamburger? Uh, no, oh, uh, hot, hot dog. dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hot side. So side, one, side, side. one half is... Oh, this is this oh, is great! Wow, this I, is great radio now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, no, I, I here senior is giving a phone to but Junior I, I, to I, look well, at. Just his to reaction look at. But, is, oh wow! But while he was looking, I'm trying to explain again. Half of it is a sport coat. The other half, just like your your hoodie sweatshirt, and it, and it zips up, and it's huge, and it's ugly. It looks I mean, like it's two sizes too big. I mean, seriously, does that look ridiculous or not? Well, it just looks ridiculous because it's too big. If you had got it tailored the so right way, this would actually be if hot. You tailor a half. Hoodie, jacket, and sport coat that it could look good? 
Yeah, business on the left, party on the right. Well, that's Stop like, a, that's like a, a, a clothing mullet. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah exactly. In the front, party it's, in the back. Except you do. You have it right. Yeah. That See, that's the next great hairstyle. A half mullet. Mullet on no. one side and no. then buzz cut on the other. No, you're welcome. There's, there's nothing right about it. You're going to see that at Coachella as, by 2019. The way, as, as Tim Hasselbeck would say every week after Cam Newton's press conferences where he came out in different clothing, yeah. says those aren't outfits, those are costumes. I just I don't understand this one now. Is is did it, is this made like this? Did he just put maybe as a, as a whole sweat jacket? Did he put half a sport coat? He just kind of put it halfway. I have no idea. Oh, but it look it looks ridiculous. It's an optical illusion created I mean, by the jacket. Okay, so just, it, it was a, it was a little ridiculous. Yeah, uh, maybe a little forward thinking for us. Well, <laughs> very. <laughs> So we also were very forward thinking uh-huh. with Shohei Itani. You know, we had big concerns after the spring training uh, and where he was not playing well. And then, of course, he went out there and did the things he did. Right. And so he became, you know, one of the guys that we're all in on. And that's why we did this. I want you to show the way. That was uh, Jer Bear and our fine staff we love putting that. that together. Fantastic. So apparently. They tried to do another version, because that's sort of an upbeat and happy, because yes, Shohei Tani's doing very well. Well, mm-hmm. he got shelled last night, yeah, only lasted two innings, got the blister, gave up a home run, was taken out uh, very early. So he did an internal investigation here uh, on Golik and Wingo, and this was something that we somebody on the staff was trying to do a sad version of our Shohei the way. Uh, let me just say right away, America, I'm sorry. I want you. To show the way. We're going to do it again. All right, so... Did, oh, was that not good? That was terrible. No, let's just do it a couple times. So I, I think we have to speed it up a little bit. To okay. Get the donut. Got it. Donuts. Uh, oh, no, that wasn't it. It's so high. I know. All right, here we go. One, two, three. I want you to show the way. Uh, that was Junior, your son, and Allie, the show eraser. Oh, and nice, gosh. right? Who, by the way, can no longer be called the show eraser. Wow. Because what we call her the show eraser because she makes, if she fixes all the mistakes, she That's, takes all the way. She'd have to she, fix her own there. She has to fix her own mistakes. Where's the wow. mistake? Yeah. Wow. How That's much, vocal range. That's how, an octave change right there. I, I give how you guys all the, you I give you guys all the credit in the world for doing that. Yeah. I do, but. You know, you got to take the good with the bad. Hey, let me in this case, what? the bad with the good. It shows you the standard <laughs> the for the two- with the bad, as some there people you go. might say. It shows you the standards for the two shows because we didn't deem that good enough to make first and last airways, but it's good enough for your guy's show over here. No, it's, it's good enough to play on this <laughs> air to mock, <laughs> to mock you, to guys. mock. Whatever you want to say, you're welcome. Yeah, there you- <laughs> well, it was certainly content. content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking of content, apparently yeah. somebody in Major League Baseball thinks there's too much of it. Mm-hmm. Cubs first baseman Anthony Rizzo. Maybe being very honest, yesterday on ESPN 1000 in Chicago had some very interesting things to say, first about the weather that baseball has had to play in, so let's listen to that first. I think playing in the cold sucks, to be honest. It is what it is. Obviously, it's usually not this cold, so this is kind of a freak April around the league. But, um, yeah, you you usually generally want to play the games now so you get your days off later especially in the summertime when you you can enjoy the days off more but uh it is what it is you know i don't think it's ever going to change so you just got to deal with it okay a couple of things there obviously this is we'll get to you in a minute you'll have your chance smart guy thank Mm -hmm. you as they say in animal house uh obviously it has been a really weird start to the bait yes it has because it's still winter everywhere for example, we've had 26 postponements of games already. Let's put that in perspective. The last two years for 162 game mm-hmm. schedule, both in 2015 and 2016, there were 25. 2016 and 2017, rather, there were 25. Right. We've already had 26 this year. Mm-hmm. So it has been an odd, odd weather-wise start to the year. Right. I mean, the, the home opener for the White Sox was snowed out in the very next day. 900 people actually mm-hmm. went through the turnstile. So we've had an issue with the weather. However... Junior took this one step further on his show and went on to say, not only is playing baseball in cold weather terrible, he crossed the line. He broke the code and said playing football in snow is terrible. As a father, how do you feel about uh, that? I think he's uh, completely wrong. I think he's incredibly wrong. I think Anthony Rizzo is wrong. Uh, so where do you want me to start? You start me, with your son. You want me to start with my son? You're, you're wrong. But, but I understand your thought process. I do. Because, and and obviously, I'm actually surprised. Because what is the, you were an offensive lineman, again, I was a defensive lineman. Offensive linemen are considered, and admittedly so, 
as far as athletes, where do you rank on the p- position in football, offensive lineman, in athletic ability? Yeah, no, it's it's near the bottom. I under, no, 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 I, no, 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 no. It's not near the bottom. Well, are you it's taking punters above, out? Yeah, it's, above above the specialists. It's I don't know this, above the specialists. We had a punter, John Telchik, and then also Jeff Fiegels, who were really good athletes. They, you know what? They look okay. like good athletes, yeah. but they can't. You got to up the degree of difficulty okay. for how big so the bodies that are. That means you're point, co- that point, mean, point of procedure. Bruce Matthews, uh, Hall of Fame offensive lineman, was actually the Titans' emergency quarterback. There for is years. always an outlier, yes, and yes. I played with Bruce in Houston, and he was an outlier. That dude was a great athlete. So that would mean you're counting specialists as football players. So okay, you're going one further than me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So my point is, you should love. The snow. Thank you. Here's why I love the snow. Thank you. I make up for my lack of speed as a D lineman with my lack of strength. Okay? I need every advantage I can get. When it's snow on the ground or bad weather, you know what happens? The whole game slows down. Now, we're in my wheelhouse, baby. So you should be happy when it's bad weather because those more athletic D linemen can't do the things they would normally do to pummel you offensive linemen. Listen, I'm going to get pummeled either way in this situation. There is really no scenario. At least there's an excuse you could say, had no footing, I was in three feet of snow. You know what? They'll watch the tape of the normal games and realize that you just said you should be happy in this bad weather. Yes. Have you been happy the last few days here in New England? When I have played, you been even close to happy? I have never had an issue playing, and I played in that in that uh, game in Dallas. Oh no, I, I get was, it. You played in like every bad weather yes, game imaginable, and I don't mind them at all. Again, man, everything comes down to my speed. I have no issue with it. And when you're out there playing, you're actually not that cold. It's when you're standing on the, the friggin' sideline that you get cold. I disagree. You were there for a game I played in high school in rainy, miserable conditions. Yeah, that was ugly. No one will look at that one and say it was great. That's true. I just don't understand why because I think Anthony Rizzo is going to get some support in this. No, he's not. Because no one who sits who is sitting out there in April right now saying, "Man, I really love sitting in these rainy, well, cold, awful yeah. games." There, there are two things. You're right. I don't think anybody wants to sit through a baseball game unless it's Game Seven of the World Series in those kind of conditions. Which, by the way, Anthony Rizzo was a part of. Remember that Game Seven went to extra yeah. innings and they yeah. had the rain to mm-hmm. get it in, so he won his World <laughs> Series uh, for the Cubs the first time in forever because of that weather. However. There's something else that Anthony Rizzo said, which I think is very interesting, and we'll need to get to that. Here's a little insider travel secret. There are tons of empty hotel rooms out there just waiting to be booked. That's why there's Hotel Tonight. Hotel Tonight partners with awesome hotels to help them fill their unsold rooms, which means you get incredible deals. And even though the name's Hotel Tonight, you can actually book up to a week in advance and up to 100 days in advance in top destinations. So download the Hotel Tonight app to start scoring better deals at better hotels now. Let's go back to another voice, and that would be Cubs first baseman Anthony Rizzo. He brought up the fact that nobody likes playing in cold weather, but then he took it one step further. Me, personally, I would love it. I think it's too much baseball, personally. Yes, guys are going to take pay cuts, but are we playing this game for the money, or we love the game? I know there's there's both, but I think in the long run, it'll make everything better. I think uh, start of the season later in the year, ending in October and not November, I just... I don't know, but that's my opinion. So basically he's saying, why do we play 162 games? That's basically what he's saying. And he said it on Cap and Company on ESPN 1000 in Chicago. So I actually have, have wondered this for a long time. I mean, the AL moved to 162 games in 1961, the NL right. a year later. The reason, because they added two teams and now had 10 in the league, they played each of the nine opponents 18, 16, 18 times apiece, and that adds up to 162. I get all that. But it is the most arbitrary of numbers, is it not? 162? It is arbitrary, but for, forgetting that, I, I love how he says, you know, I, I know it means a smaller paycheck. He's willing to do that. Anthony, take a poll. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Take a poll of the other baseball players. Say, raise your hand. Who's willing to give up some money and go to 154 or lower than that and give up some money? Are our owners going to get less money now? I mean, what is the monetary effect that is going to drive this? And and let's I, I get this year, but this is what we do. My God, it's one year, one year. Let's not knee jerk for one year well, of all of a sudden well, we got twenty five cancellations or twenty six or whatever it is. But I think there's two parts to this. I, I think the cancellation and the cold weather is a separate discussion. I think it just bled into the other one. I think a lot of people have wondered for a lot of years, where the hell do we play one hundred and sixty two games? I mean, it's such a it's 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 not a it's it's a it's a weird number. I get it. I I understand that. But now 
It's not going to change unless it comes from baseball. No fan screaming Correct. about it is going to make it come less. So now if it's going to come less from baseball, you got to have baseball players willing to take less money and maybe owners taking less money. They're not going to do that. My question is, would you have to now? And this would well, be, if you don't, then that's a this, whole different well, thing. Because this would be a question that I have just for the way this breaks down, for how many games are on TV. If you lose some of the games that maybe aren't televised to begin with or already, because I know regional baseball channels cover a lot of that so maybe there's no way to lose out on that because yeah, there's, there's base- nationally televised yeah. games and almost everybody's regular season games are broadcast in some way, shape, or form in their own right. market. And right. so maybe that's driving it, but we live in a time now where more and more of the national appeal of sports teams to be driving that. And for baseball, I know a lot of their digital presence has driven a lot of that. It's added sponsorship. And all of this has happened, by the way. They continue to hit revenue highs. I think they were over $10 billion in revenue last year. This is while attendance has been dipping along the way. So maybe you can uh, com- uh, create a little more supply and demand com- making fewer games with that, com- too. Completely different scenario if if you can tell, because I'm sorry, gang, owners, when they're in a meeting room, how, they don't they, say, how can we they, make they less hear, money? Blah, 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 blah. How much is going in my pocket? Wait a minute. Less? No deal. But if you can figure out a way to go less games well, and they're not losing yeah. money, then you're going to have something to talk about. Well, and it's not just, let's, let's it's not just owners. Players well, never think I, I take started less. with the owners. Yes. Yeah. Then, then I players, mean, like I said, Anthony, go take a poll. Yeah. Like, go it, on. I, I, there, there were there were there were pitchers. Uh, you know, there was a pitcher that signed with the Rockies, and he said it was he wanted to sign there because it was a schools. Was it Mike Hampton? I think it was. It was Mike Hampton. It's like no, you went there because they gave you the most money. Well, I mean, I mean that, listen, it's, there, there whenever, are whenever, it whenever part a player of it, right? says it's not about the money, it's about the money. Yeah. Let's just be clear. And one of the reasons why so many players when they get upset, they get in a pay cut, they want to find so go somewhere else so they can get that money back. That's what they want to do. But the idea of players or owners taking less money in this scenario? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Uh, that's, that, that's never going to happen. It's just not happening. They're not going to go that way. Although I will say this. Remember the NBA lockout a few years ago, 2011-2012 season? Right. They only played 66 games. Right. There was a little more sense of urgency. Mm-hmm. The, the regular season seemed a little more interesting, and there weren't these long months where just like, oh, yeah. yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there. From a fan's perspective, it was actually great. I agree. But you know what? We're not getting any money. I agree. So I think that's the bigger issue going forward. And uh, that was Straight Talk, by the way, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Mm-hmm. Uh, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Think, coming up... I think Brett thinks Carol had the real Straight Talk. Well, that's also true. And we'll get to Brett, because Brett Amology is coming up in a little bit. The NBA playoffs continue to deliver, plus an NFL superstar says he's now taking a page from the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm-hmm. Who is trusting the process, and is he being facetious or for real? Stay with us. Everyone in the neighborhood knew about Bobby. Bobby, the basketball boy, they called him. Bobby wanted to go pro someday, so he was always out in the driveway shooting hoops. But one day, his mom came out and told him, Hey, your wife wants you to take out the trash? His mom was visiting, and Bobby was a grown man. He had kind of missed his window. Plus, no one had ever seen him actually make a basket. But on the other hand, Bobby had heard how Geico could save him money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. So, it was all good. Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. My friend, I don't care. He still sucks as a friend. You got a friend in me. It's not like I got to have a mindset to go out there and score 30, 40 points. I just 37. What you mean? I didn't go out there saying, let me score but, 30 tonight. But, but I'm saying, you had 37. Don't say it. Like but I'm you. saying, I didn't go out there but saying. But all I'm saying, I'm, you can't say that when you had 37. Listen what I'm trying to explain, though, what bro. Saying, I understand what you said. No, you don't. Let me finish. I didn't even. Can I? Leave. Maybe we missed it. They should just do the Toy Story remake. It's Toy so Story Five. Good. Toy Story Five North of the Border. That's what it should be for DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. Golgan Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests will join us on the Shell Penzoa performance line. And of course, we're going on the road for the draft mm. uh, next week. We're excited about that. And Golgan Wingo on the road. Brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Cars, homes, boats, motorcycles, RVs, buses, and more at Progressive. Dot com. All right, we got a lot oh, yeah. to get Looking to. Looking forward to taking the bus down Possibly there. Down there. Be We're excited awesome. about it. Can't wait to drive awesome. that. Awesome.
No, no, no. No, you, no, don't, you don't get to you don't No, have but no, it's license. cool. No. no, it's not cool. Nope. It is cool. There's it's nothing not cool. cool about I'm it. looking into some things right now. I think there are a few legal loopholes that I can jump through oh, to make good. sure that I'm driving the Because that's, that's what our that's department what wants want. to hear legal yeah. loopholes. Yeah. Let's just close that loophole and move on. Yeah. So what's trending in the NBA? It's the Raptors beating the Wizards 130 to 119. Toronto leads that series two games to none. Their first ever 2 0 lead in a playoff series in franchise history. And DeMar Rosen, a big reason why. Yeah, 37 points in this one uh he, he was a monster and you you just heard some of that it, it, it it's great great to hear demar Derozan and kyle lowry two buddies how they go back and forth in that but uh you know with washington john wall who had missed a lot of time with injury did have 29 uh in this one but toronto we keep talking about them as as everybody's saying they're different this year different this year the bottom line is they have to get over that uh east uh eastern conference hump which is the lebron one uh if they and who knows if they'll even see him. That would be the second-round matchup. LeBron and company have to get it done against the Pacers, which I think most of us still think they would do, which would put them together uh, in the second round. And that's when the talk will really start and saying, is this Toronto team really ready to take the next step? And it's amazing that that has to be the standard yeah. that we judge them by. But they, they've done that, right? I mean, they're the, they're the reason why we're saying it. Well, no, LeBron's the reason why we're saying well, yeah. it. LeBron is the reason for all for this, him. the same way Golden State is in the West. Do you think these teams, some of these teams, Boston, Philadelphia, and the like, are really looking hard at this summer for LeBron and saying, man, if he goes to the West, all of a sudden it is open season for us in the East, man. We got our shot. Well, listen, again, the off season sometimes is more interesting than any part of the NBA regular season or postseason, but right now the postseason has been pretty interesting. Raptors most points in a playoff game in franchise history with 130. Celtics take a two games to none lead over the Bucks, which history says this series is over. Jalen Brown, 30 points. Brown at 21 years old, 175 days, is the youngest player in Celtics history to score 30 points in a playoff game. Yeah, pretty impressive what he's done. Terry Rozier has a couple of big games, 23 points in this one. He's gone, what, 78 minutes, no turnovers. That's the most uh, impressive it thing. It really, actually. really is impressive, uh, even though Eric Bledsoe from Milwaukee still doesn't know who he is, though a little back and forth. That may go back to game one. Either way, I, I picked Milwaukee in this one. I thought without, obviously, Hayward had been out the whole year, but then without Kyrie, Kyrie. I mean, seriously, I mean, that's, that's the man on this team. Uh, Celtics still getting it done. Uh, Middleton had a slow start in this one, still ended up with 25. Ante DeCumpo had third. Ante DeCumpo had a play where he was dribbling up court and Shane Larkin tried to get a charging foul. It was at the the, the free throw oh, line. Oh, yeah, no, that. The free throw line, and he moved, and it was a blocking foul. And Giannis was falling down just inside the free throw line and put up a shot and made it. I mean, it showed you why he was the Greek freak, the athlete that he was, to try and have an attempt at the three-point play. Uh, but the Celtics, man, so undermanned here, especially uh, obviously without Kyrie. And what the youngins are doing out there is pretty impressive. I feel like he's really transitioning now to a one-name guy. I feel like we're making the move to Giannis. Before yes. it was the Greek freak right, when he was right. just kind of a dunk contest, dunk phenom guy. And now that he's become an actual bona fide star, you can try and play me off all you want. I promise you. I'll start thanking the Pope. I'd like to thank my mom, the Milwaukee Bucks, and everyone <laughs> uh, for making this move. Moment possible. Yeah. Mike. You, no, you can't Kill silence me. We move you on. and your clock mean nothing to me. There we go. Nothing to me. Very quickly, here's why history says it's over. The Celtics are 35 and 0 when yep. they have a two nothing lead in the best of seven series. And oh, by the way, the Bucks are 0 and 13 when they're down. Those uh, aren't good too, stats. Uh, you know, history says mm-hmm. we'd like to thank the Bucks for their participation in the playoffs. While we're on the subject, we yeah. also probably need to talk about Brad Stevens, who's not getting nearly enough shine for Coach of the Year. The guy is just incredible. We move the on. job he has put together Meanwhile, with the this Pelicans team. Beat the Trailblazers Marcus Smart still not back. Pelicans lead this series two games to none. <laughs> Remember, they lost Gordon Hayward at the beginning of the year, too. Oh, People forget God. that. Shut up. Here we go. Isn't that it? Th- this one, I picked Portland. Did who did you pick in this one? I think I picked Portland. I, I know I picked Portland in this one. I mean, New Orleans getting two on the road here. Drew Holiday, both ends of the, uh, the, co- of the court in this one, playing over 38 minutes, 33 points, but playing good defense as well. And Anthony Davis, I mean, you're just waiting for him to start to get the MVP awards at some point when we keep wanting to talk about young players, young aspiring players, Joel Embiid's of the world, the Carl Anthony Towns of the world. Anthony Davis is not old. It just seems like he's been in the league forever. 
been nicked up for a while, but boy, oh boy, I mean, it, it, I, I, again, how many MVPs are in his future? You can talk about youth and you can talk about Jalen Brown and the night that he had for the Boston Celtics last night. 30 points and yeah. just wow. I mean, one there of the youngest go. guys to Joke's do it over. for them yeah. in the playoffs. Joke's it over, has been incredible Joke's playing over. for a young coach, too. Youth, you want to talk about youth and excitement? You're talking about the Boston Celtics. Joke's over. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, it's over when I say it's over. No, actually, you it's and over. Your, you it's, and the clock, all of you mean nothing. You're figments. It, You're constructs. Actually, it's actually over when I and they decide it's over. Wow. By the way, Turn uh, my mic right Holiday back again, we talked about the career high 33 points. Worked. The Blazers, 2-19 and 19 in series when trailing two games to none. God, so hurry up, Trey. is against them, and I hit the Good buzzer. Good job. And you did. You got the shot off. Yeah. Kids, yeah. that's how it's done. There you go. So, <laughs> speaking of how it's done, apparently the process is working in Philadelphia, and one of the largest stars in the NFL dared to go there. Now, look, obviously, if you try to tank in the NFL – you will get many parts of your body hurt. Yes, you it's will. It's not possible. However, it has been a tumultuous offseason for one Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay quarterback. He saw his quarterback coach, Alex Van Pelt, uh, not given a new deal. He saw his favorite wide receiver over the years, Jordy Nelson, uh, shipped out to right. Oakland or cut, basically, and then uh, was signed by John Gruden and the Oakland Raiders. So as Aaron Rodgers showed up for offseason workouts, you think maybe he was a little upset. He decided he wanted to take the high road and went there. I know my role, and that's to play, to play quarterback the best that I can. And, and the team is going to try and, uh, you know, put the right guys in place, the right coaches in place, the right uh, players in place. And you just have to trust the process. Um, as we've uh, we've talked about over the years, you know, this uh, this process works, and it has worked uh, for Mike for a number of years. Obviously, that's why he's still here in his 13th season. Uh, we've had a lot of success here, and he's got to trust the process. Um, they're paying me to play quarterback to the best of my abilities. Um, and, and their job descriptions um, are to handle those type of things. So um, I think you just act accordingly. So there's a lot to get into. Oh, First boy. of all, former Sixers GM Sam Hinkie has to be thinking, see, I tried to tell everybody mm -hmm. and nobody wanted to believe me. Second mm -hmm. of all, I don't believe... Uh, Aaron is going down the hey we're gonna we're gonna lose to get better drafted. That's not the process he's saying. No, trust no. what he's saying is look, it's been fairly successful here with the way Mike McCarthy, uh, formerly Ted Thompson, and other new GM are have run things. So I'm gonna step back a little bit, but I also think he's saying in a way, all right, guys, you want me to just play quarterback? I'll just go play quarterback. But you guys better get it done now. Well, let me ask you. Do you think, you know, we see this obviously in basketball all the time. The top players, we always hear, uh, especially about LeBron, he's really the coach, the GM running the show, and, and the players have power in the NBA. Do you think a player should have that kind of power in, in NFL? Not so much power, but be asked about decisions? Well, wh whether they, whether they should is almost irrelevant because they never will because they'll never have the guaranteed contracts outside of Kirk Cousins right. that you get all the time in the NBA. So whether it's right or wrong, that dollar sign tends to mean a lot more uh, when that money is assigned to you and you know you're going to get it. So, I mean, look, Aaron is what? He's got two years left on his deal, <laughs> Brad Zachary? Yeah. Two years left. And he's seeing all these deals that are going around, and he knows, hey, I'm going to get paid one way or the other. But people are wondering, have the Packers not done enough in the Aaron Rodgers era at his prime? Yeah, and, and I guess to, to answer, I asked you the question, yeah. I'd answer the question, and maybe it comes from my years as a and you were the same way, Mike, we're foot soldiers, right? I mean, we weren't at the top of the food chain to be in a position to think anybody would come to us for a decision. So I've always played with that mentality of just what just what Aaron said, whether he was saying it tongue-in-cheek or not and bringing up the process so many times, uh, is is I, I do think, yeah, yeah, they make those decisions and let you know this is who your teammates are going to be. I don't think you should be going to players and asking them their decisions. Now, the one thing we know that upset him, and maybe it's a different part of it, was the quarterback coach, Alex Van Pelt, that, that they lost and they didn't talk to him about there. But if they were going to get rid of him, maybe they didn't want to talk to Aaron Rodgers uh, about that situation. But I never believe, but I know what happens, obviously, in the NBA with the guaranteed contracts and the guys on the court, offense, defense. You know, you're, you're, you're all encompassing as opposed to just playing one side of the ball in the NFL. You can understand it with Aaron Rodgers, though, to an extent, right? We just dealt with this problem in New England where everyone assumes the importance of their part. But the difference is everyone involved is otherworldly great at what they do and Brady and Belichick and Kraft and right. all the like. No one else in this Packers organization is as good as their job as Aaron is at his. They're not even close. Mike McCarthy's a pretty good head coach. Mike McCarthy's a pretty good head coach, but is he one of the two or three greatest head coaches in the league right now? Is he one of the best coaches of all time? Doubt it.
I, look, none of the none of the other guys in this organization. So I'm just saying, from Aaron's perspective, especially for the things that affect him, his his primary target at wide receiver, the guy that he spends his meeting time with in the quarterback room, to all of a sudden look around and say, oh, "Okay, you guys took those from me." That's fine. I'll trust you, but it better be something good in return because you talk about the importance of NBA players. You could argue if one guy is as important to his team in the NFL as an NBA player is to their team, it's Aaron Rodgers. This team is nothing without him. Well, nothing. Well, we saw that last year yeah. when he went down with a broken collarbone and their season was lost. Um, look, I, I'm not going to say Mike McCarthy is one of the greatest coaches of all time, but I've always been struck by the way Bill Belichick talks about Mike McCarthy when those two teams play. It's pretty clear that Belichick has a hell of a lot of respect for Mike McCarthy and the way he goes about his business, that to me carries a lot of weight. So I'm not going to say he's up there with Bill Belichick, but outside of Belichick and Mike McCarthy, those are those are some of the best coaches we got. I, in oh, I, 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 I think agree, to, but... Mike, to Mike's point, I, I agree. You have Belichick, Brady, Gronkowski. Yeah. Best in the business, best in the business, best in the business. And right. some best of all time in right, those situations. Right. Yes. Exactly right. And, and you don't have that. Uh, in Green Bay, and and I know Green Bay fans. I mean, listen, Green Bay fans had Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers, and you're like. We need to, how many, how many right now, how right. many Super Bowl wins do you have with all of those? That would be one. That would be one. So you're like, we, we went back to back. The only, some of the only, only other back to backs you can talk about, maybe that great in this Steve modern Young, time Joe with Steve Montana. Young, Joe Montana. Yeah. And what do you have to show for it? Right now they have one. It's like, we got to make hay while we have one of the great quarterbacks playing. Absolutely. And Aaron is 34. And look, Tom is obviously showing us that you can play a long time right. at, at a high level, but you know, at some point, he had to realize he's the outlier, uh, especially when when Aaron is more of an athletic quarterback. Yes. You know, Tom is strictly you know by the book, make the play, all that kind of stuff. And he's sneaky, but Aaron is much more athletic when it comes to moving around in the pocket than Brady is. So you want to make sure you capitalize what you can, and it's going to be very interesting going forward, seeing what happens with Aaron Rodgers when he trusts the process. Well, we all trust oh, a very important process, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. And as Carol in Virginia wants to know, yeah. it's that time. It's the game show segment that's captivating a nation. The origin is Latin. It has been sort of corrupted over time, like this show. Making everyone that hears it smarter. In the 1800s, English authors were likely to partake in opium den activities. Now, with your host, researcher Brett. Take a guess where that came from. Brett's got your answer. It's Brettomology. Here are the categories. Words and their meanings. That's straightforward. And that is the only category. Bretomology is brought to you by Discover Card, who will match all the cash back new card members earn at the end of their first years. Learn more at discover.com slash match. And as always, limitations apply. Okay, we mentioned Carol from Virginia. Yes, we did. Apparently, Brett has a fan, and this is something that uh, Carol called in to say how much she loves bread and bretomology. Hey, Golic and Wingo, it's Carol from Virginia. I love your show, and I love Bretomology. Just a suggestion for Brett, work on your pronunciations like Aristophanes, not Aristophanes, Pliny, not Pliny, and Pompey, not Pompeii, the city which was destroyed by Vesuvius. By the way, Brett, you are so right about Bob Dylan. You can't sing. Have a great day. Wow. Is that your mom? Wow. Is that your mom? You know, Brett? I have a bonus phrase for you guys okay. this week. Or and uh, the origin is Carol from Virginia. Okay, throwing Whoa. shade. Yeah, throwing yeah. shade. All right. Yeah. So we that's have, all it is. We're going to get to the actual. So it really wasn't it at all. All right. So the one thing about this that needs Four to improve. Ten. Yeah. Uh, Trey, you and I are both seven for twelve. Right. Mike is here this He's time. Inaugural it, 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 it's as well. It's his expansion run. So he, if he can do as well as the Golden Knights, we'll be right. very. He would always be in the back group when they would be answering. What we need to improve upon. Cliff, this is on you. Yeah. Who's right and who's wrong? So hold off until we ask. If we get different answers here, who's right, who's wrong, before we do the buzzer. I think we're just going to go with Brett because Cliff messed it up. That's probably time. a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Cliff, we, love, you're out. we love Cookmaster right. Cliff. Yeah. We love you. But Except this one this. may be outside your window of yep. expertise. Yeah. Good point. All right, Brett, here we go. What is the first phrase? <laughs> All right. Phrase number one of four. Big cheese. Uh, mm-hmm. Means the, the most important. Mm-hmm. Yes. Person. Aaron Rodgers. The big enchilada. Aaron Rodgers. Right. Sure. Mike McCarthy? <clears throat> Is it Gouda? <laughs> cheese became Aqua? a slang term for money during the Great Depression when food prices spiked and cheese was largely inaccessible to people, especially in cities. Big cheese was slang for someone who had the means to afford whatever groceries they wanted. I really like or, that definition. Or, or, or prior to cheesy, meaning second rate, in the 1800s in Britain, 
It was a slang term to call something the cheese, which meant it was the best of its kind. Wow. I am going with numero uno. Two. You're going with one. one. Junior, you're going with two. Two. I'm going with one. I think I'm going to go with one as well. So one or two. Brett, is it one or two correct? Two is correct. Oh! Oh! No way. Right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. Junior is one for one, and we are seven for 13. Wow. All right, what's next? Gravy train. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. great. Yeah. 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 Gravy train. Easy job. We got a food theme going today, yeah. Brett. We do. You the hungry? The theme is food today. Okay. I'm sorry. I Does he look hungry? Yeah. Is it 1920s railroad workers use this term as shorthand to describe a job that would be easy but pay well? Gravy was already slang for easy money at the time, so it was a short jump to combine it with the industry they were working in. Mm-hmm. Or, 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 in the early 1900s, elite families in New York City would have elaborate staffs working in their homes. The easiest job was working in the kitchen. Those who worked the kitchen duty were said to be, quote, riding the gravy boat, which eventually became the gravy train. All right, could you re- re- read that first one again to me? The first one. Ooh. 1920s railroad workers used this term as shorthand to describe a job that would be easy but pay well. Gravy was already slang for easy money, so it was a short jump to combine it with the industry they were working in. Well, I tell you what, the wrong ones are well done. Yeah, this is, the, this really is the closest good. you've ever gone. I'm going with number two. I'm going number one. Mike, where do you go? Two spot. Like Got to be due. So one or two, correct. Two. Number one is correct. Bang! Oh, man! Bang! There we go. Bamboozle. Yes. Who's the smart guy now? There you go. So wow. Junior is one for two. I am eight for 13. Golik is seven for 13. All right, what do you got, 13. smart guy? Upset the apple cart. Aha! Uh-huh. To create difficulty. Yes. Is it the apple cart? Originally referred to the human body, oh. Francis Gross first documented it in 1788 in the Ooh. Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue Gross. when upset the apple cart meant to knock a man off his feet. That or, was a lot. Or, or, or during the late 1800s in the South, organized crime syndicates paid farmers to transport contraband along with their produce. When a supply line was cut off, the police literally upset the apple cart. The phrase came back during Prohibition in the 1920s, by which point the apple cart itself was gone, but the smuggling remained. I, I feel really good about two. I do as well. I, I feel I, really good about not, two. It's one of the greatest made-up yes, ones I've I heard. I feel really Don't good go about two. The family. Yeah. What are you doing? Gotta be one. Yeah. Gotta, oh, be one. One. Two. Gotta, Gotta be one. Two. Gotta be one. One is correct. Oh, oh my. That's what I'm talking about. Man. Wow. I see you, Devin. Wow. That, that was a really good one because I, I read really a book was. once called Cosa Nostra about the start of the Italian mob and how they did use apple carts uh, and part of that stuff in New York City. So Look where all that reading got they, you. They actually, they actually stuffed See? the guy in a barrel True. once. Reading means See? nothing. Reading has done nothing good for anyone. I'm 0 for 3, by the did way. Did you just say reading has not done no good for anyone? No. Did you get the answer right from your book? Uh, mm-hmm. No, but that's no. reading. I got mine. fundamental. Wait, wait, wait to take a really gross generalization. I got mine from the internet. Stream. I don't read a lot. Look at me. Like I said. Okay. All right, here we go. Yep. Last one this week. All right, your final phrase. To chew the fat. Ah, oh, chew whoa. the fat. Yes. Something, something these two clearly have a clear advantage I on. I have to get this one right. Chew myself. And we are going to take it to the British Army. Go to the Army! <laughs> Is it from the War of 1812, when British soldiers allied with the legendary Shawnee warrior Tecumseh, I'm sure Carol's going to correct me on that. Oh, yeah. And his army of Native Americans. The British scouts stationed with the Native American scouts observed their custom of chewing on buffalo or rabbit hides, Ooh. which they would do during any tedious periods, like they were, when they were on post or, or the a tracking segment. mission. Yeah. Or, 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 or. <laughs> is it a British Army term documented by J. Brumless Patterson in 1885? British soldiers in India in the 1800s would often sit around during idle times and chew on their rations of salted pork. Okay, you see what he's done here, first of all. Yeah. Both definitions have the words British soldiers yeah, and do. either India or Indians. So if you had any sort of thought process of how this may lead you, he's thrown you because you, you could hear either one of those things in, in the correct answer. Number one. Number one strong. Number one. Number two is correct. Oh, come on! You're a jerk. Get you know, out of here. I'm going to give you a little bit extra context here. It actually, uh, 
it evolved from the term chew the cud, which is what uh, what a cow does. Yeah. Animals have to regurgitate their food sure, and chew sure. on we, it. We got that. Yeah, we get yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Or. Yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm just giving you more context. Okay, good. Your time's up. I went over for four. You took the, by the way, you started four for four. You're now under five hundred. Uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, so if we're going by percent percentages, I'm tied for first right now. Yeah, Let's you go. By the way, you you have not gotten one right in the last two weeks. No, I've not. I was four I got for four. Wow. Right. I'm batting five hundred. Yeah, and so I'm in the Hall of Fame. And you're batting five hundred eight for sixteen. And junior, you're two for four. Yeah, but it's a, it, it, you know, it, it's hot start I'm, with that, you. That's, that's like hitting three home runs in one game I'm and hitting you. four the rest. I of agree. The year, he's got to build. So. He's got to build it up get, a little more. You can get Player of the Week hitting three home runs in a game. Yes, once. Uh, do it for the season. See, right now I'm in the Hall of Fame at 8 for 16. I'm just telling you right I now I'm in the stink. Hall of Fame. I just stink. So back to that reading thing and how it's working for you. <sighs> huh? There you go. Yeah. Exactly. All right. <laughs> so, Junior, thanks for playing. Yeah. Uh, Brett, thanks for being the star of the show. And Carol from Virginia, you don't know what you've created. Coming up, a rare admission from a commissioner in one of the major sports. That's next. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Winning at sports and at sports broadcasting means changing things up. Just like La Quinta Inns and Suites is changing up their look. A renovated lobby that's so contemporary it even makes Golic look cool. Yes, it does. And a totally updated fitness center that even has Wingo feeling like a workout. I'm ripped. Plus, plenty of comfortable spaces to hang out. Yeah, this La Quinta look definitely has a vibe of victory. So you can just relax, refresh, and get ready for your next big meeting. Prepare to win at business with La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. By the way, speaking of Brett and Brettomology, you sweeping, mentioned sweeping the nation. You mentioned you were eight for sixteen. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that you would basically be in the Hall of Fame because you're a five hundred hitter. Yeah, I, I I saw this tweet from John, and I'm trying to. There's no way he's right. He says Trey eight for sixteen isn't five hundred. Twelve for twelve is. I guess math wasn't your strong subject. Uh, John, I, John, twelve for twelve is perfection. Is, is perfection. What are you talking about? I, I, it actually made me stop and think. I said, could this, what, what is he what's, saying? What's 16 divided in half? It's eight. What's eight plus eight is 16. 12 for 12 is 100 I, out of 100. I, I, John, I don't know what you're John, coming from. John, we'd like to thank you for your participation Holy in smokes. the Golic and Wingo Twitter feed, but we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. I thought I was losing my mind no. when, when he, when he no. tweeted that. So you, you think John was trying to gaslight you? Is that what I, you're I, I don't know what was going on there, but right. it made me actually think for a minute. When I knew what the answer was, John, put eight down. for sixteen isn't five hundred. Twelve for twelve is. John, John, you need to put down the Twitter machine and go back to whatever it is you were. You doing. really hope his job has nothing to do with numbers. If he's a CPA or a tax guy, wow. somebody's in real trouble. Wow. All right, we continue here on Golik and Wingo, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line. Look, we try and tackle the tough issues. There we go on the show, <clears throat> like math with John, uh, but also what to do about the end of the NBA season. Because let's be honest, there's two races at the end of the NBA season. Mm-hmm. To get into the playoffs and to find in any way, shape, or form a way to not win uh, to get the best chances at getting the best pick right. in the draft lottery. It's been a problem. It's been addressed by NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, who, of course, they're going to a different formula mm-hmm. next year, which we believe, actually, will only create more tanking because right. now you have better odds of more teams right. to so, get that so number instead one of that the, lowest the, pick. The worst team getting the best percentage for the first pick, now the worst three teams get the same percentage, which I think is basically, what, 14% uh, each number one each of the f- bottom three yes. teams get. So it really chance. opens you up now to be one of the worst three teams, yeah. not just the worst team. So you don't have to get to the bottom. You just yeah. have to be in the bottom three. Bottom three. three. So yeah. obviously we think that's convoluted. We, while we admire the attempt, we think it didn't really clear up anything. And this is what NBA Commissioner Adam Silver had to say about that on the Stephen A. Smith show on ESPN Radio. I recognize that it can be, especially on paper, a successful strategy, which is why we changed the draft lottery and reduced the odds down from 25 percent to 14 percent for mm-hmm. the for the first pick for the for the for the worst performing team. But but on top of that, we may not have gone far enough. And mm-hmm. I I think because to, to the extent that the 76ers 
are successful, it makes that approach that much more tempting for other teams. And and ultimately, this that's what a league is about. It's about competition. And so it's something I'm watching very closely. All right, there's two things to get in there. Number one, he's absolutely right. It did work for the Yes, Sixers. it did. I mean, it took, it was a long way to get there. Right. And you never want to put your fans through what, three years of, of guaranteed losing to make sure you get these picks. And we understand that. But that's the problem. It actually it worked. worked. Right. What we're seeing, you don't have Ben Simmons. You don't have Joel Embiid. We don't know what's going to happen with Marco Fultz, right. obviously. But youngest ever have a triple double. I mean, Correct. even coming off injury. So okay. you, you just, you just, it, it's been rewarded. So they're trying to fix it. You and I believe their fix is only going to make it worse. The, the, the fix, yeah, he's saying the top, the, the top now going from 25% to 14%, but you've expanded that to now three teams. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't get the help there. Bottom line is, and he said it, and he's right, more needs to be done. The question is though, Trey, what? What more? What can be done? You know, you've heard all the arguments of take the first team out of the playoffs. That would, that would be a team like, look at Denver. Denver lost the last game of the season to Minnesota. Denver was the, the out then and Minnesota was in. Right. So there are those that say give those teams the highest draft picks. But then the thought is, well, how will the lowest teams ever get better then? Yeah. They, now they're the worst team. Now they're not getting the best draft picks. So they have to completely rely, you know, on trades and or free agency. But if you're that bad, who is a free agent, a big time free agent is going to go to your team when it's equal pay. That's the big separator in a sport like football is one side can offer way more money than the other side in basketball. When you're talking about max players, you know, they're, they're trying to make it better to stay for your own team to get more money. But if you go somewhere else, it's basically the same amount of money. And who's going to go to one of the worst teams in the league? Right. So I, I don't know the fix for this. Here's the bigger problem. It's the, the NBA situation is the anti-Ricky Bobby. Because what is Ricky Bobby's slogan? If you're, if you're not first, first you're last. last. Well, no. In, if, in the NBA, if you're not first, you want to be last. Yeah. Because right. there's nothing worse than being in the middle. When it comes to the NBA, quite frankly, a team like the Denver Nuggets, who you just mentioned, that lost that right. last game of the season, uh, that missed out on the postseason, are arguably in a worst case scenario than some of these teams that are at the bottom and have a chance to draft and get these really good players. So this is the dynamic that has to be fixed because, and I, I'll be honest, I don't know what the answer is. I, I don't, I do I, not know. I don't think it's rewarding the first teams out of the playoffs because I don't know how the bottom feeders ever, ever, ever get better, especially when we saw. Philadelphia, how they did get better yeah. uh, having those number one picks. So I, I don't know the answer to this. Um, I will say this. I'll give Adam Silver credit for trying and admitting that it's a problem. Because let's be honest, out of all the big commissioners out there, he is extremely progressive. Yes. He is the guy Proactive, that, not reactive. Proactive, not reactive. And more in tune maybe with the players right. than anybody else. I mean, there is a real partnership, I believe with the way the NBA League Office and the NBA Players Association work together, whether it's on trying to fix things in the game, whether it's about trying to work together to make sure everybody has the most money coming out of these situations, Mm -hmm. or quite frankly, working together on social issues. And I feel like the NFL has made some real progress in that area over the last couple of years with what Rodgers tried to do, but I I think that the template has been set here by Adam Silver and the way he's attacked this problem, right? I I absolutely agree, but this... This is going to continue to be a problem uh, because you can't do it. I mean, you, you see teams doing it all the time, and I know there's been the, the edict that if you're doing it, you can get penalized for doing it, but good luck yeah. you know, with, with that. Again, and what we'll continue to say, and, and I want to make sure I say, this isn't the players. The players are not the ones on the court trying to lose. No. This is all management with the players they're putting out there. They're just not as good, uh, good enough players to compete with other players. Players are trying to win. Players aren't going to do this, especially because there are X amount of, of max players and then there's the majority, which yeah. is everybody else who wants to play well to put themselves in position for a better contract and going out there and an and individual trying to lose is not helping your cause for that at all. These are organizational right. decisions, right. not player decisions. Because as you said, if you're out there and you're a fringe player, yeah. the last thing you want to yeah. do is go out there and stink it up because you exactly. know what you aren't anymore? A fringe player. That's exactly. You're right. a G League player right. or you're going to Europe or somewhere else, which is not to say that going to Europe wouldn't be a terrible thing. But it's not what their goal is. Correct. And yeah. it's not where you're going to make the most money as right. well. So we'll see what happens going forward. Forward. We applaud the commissioner for saying, hey, we got a problem. We tried to fix it. We may not have done the right thing, but we're trying to get in that direction, and we'll see what happens. All right, coming up, arguably the best player available in next week's NFL draft will join us next. That's pass rusher Bradley Chubb out of North Carolina State. Love scoring amazing hotel deals? Then you've got to get the Hotel Tonight app. Forget scrolling through never-ending lists of hotels. 
Hotel Tonight shows you a select list of incredible deals at hotels you actually want to stay at. And even though the name's Hotel Tonight, you can book up to a hundred days in advance in top destinations, and up to a week in advance everywhere else. Want to get those deals? Yeah, yeah, you do. Download the Hotel Tonight app now. The Buccaneers get defensive end Jason Pierre-Paul in a deal with the Giants. Well, maybe they're not going after a quarterback. Maybe they're all in on Bradley Chubb. I'm of the belief that last year, if you were stacking him up play for play with Miles Garrett, I'm taking him. I think he's that good. Golden Wingo, presented by Progressive's Home Insurance. Getting a quote is easier than ever. All right, we continue here on Golgan Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. It is uh, just about a week from the start of the draft. Next Thursday uh, will be the start of the draft. Next uh, week at this time, Wednesday, Golgan Wingo will be coming to you from uh, the great city of Dallas as we get set for what should be the three-day extravaganza. And while so much talk has been made about the quarterbacks right. available in this draft, <laughs> mm-hmm. if you take quarterbacks out of it, a lot of people believe because there will be a run of quarterbacks at the top of the draft, the best players available in the draft really will fall in that 6 through 12 range. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that's where you're going to see guys like Quentin Nelson, the guard from, from Notre Dame, uh, a couple of uh, defensive backs, Minka Fitzpatrick out of Alabama, Derwin James, the safety out of Florida State, uh, be drafted uh, Tremaine Edmonds, the, the linebacker out of Virginia Tech. Oh, as what well, an athlete. As well is. as Bradley wow. Chubb out of North Carolina State. I, I would say, outside of the quarterbacks, and we know the quarterbacks get the talk, and especially there's a number of them this year, The the be- and I would say they're better than the quarterbacks, but the quarterbacks are going to be the, the top picks. We know that. The three best, and then it starts to fall off, in my opinion, is Saquon Barkley, Bradley Chubb, and Quentin Nelson. Whatever right. order you want to put them in. But those are the three guys who I think, outside of the quarterback talk that we have, are the three best, even quite honestly with the quarterback, are the three best in this draft. And then you, I, I'm with the, the Mika Fitzpatrick, the Tremaine Edmonds and all, and those guys who are excellent players, I think, as well. But I think those three headline it. Uh, Saquon Barkley, Quentin Nelson, and Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb, I got to see him play up close and personal. In North Carolina State played Notre Dame this year. Right. I was at that game. Plus, I saw him play in other games and watch a lot of tape on him. You know, at 6'4", like 270, He's a lanky player. Really, I really love his gap control, his discipline, and then his pass rush ability is fantastic. Look, he can do it all, and we are delighted to be joined now in Golik and Wingo by soon to be one of the top picks in the NFL draft, a former North Carolina State defensive end, Bradley Chubb. Hey, Bradley, thanks for being with us. When you hear Lewis Riddick, our ESPN NFL insider, office front office guy, say you compare favorably to Miles Garrett, who was the number one overall pick in last year's draft, what does that say about what your expectations are? for myself and I, lo- I know a lot of people outside will have uh, high expectations of me as well so I'm just going to wherever team I get drafted by work my work my tail off like I did my four years at uh, NC State and just try to be the best me and as I was saying before and watching you play I-, I love your your speed off the edge but your discipline your gap discipline you can play in any scheme I really appreciate that as a former defensive lineman what do you think in your mind is the biggest thing you're going to bring to an NFL team um, just my leadership, my ability to uh, to rush the passer, um, my 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 love for the game, um, just everything that embodies a great football player. I feel like I'm gonna bring to a, to a team. And I'm just excited to to bring, um, bring it. Uh, Bradley Chubb bringing it with us right now on Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Uh, Bradley, when when you look at this year's draft, a lot of people are heavy on the quarterbacks. But what I noticed at one of your workouts at North Carolina State at the Pro Day, Bill Belichick came down and had a really interesting exchange with you and, and took a lot of time to talk to you. And he, he had a great line where he said, you won't be there when we draft at 31, but you're a hell of a player. What did it mean to hear something like that from a guy many consider to be one of the best talent evaluators and coaches the NFL's ever seen? I mean, it's definitely, a hum, it's definitely humbling. Um, just because he's won so many Super Bowls, done so many things um, – at the uh, at the, the highest level of football, and for him to look at me and say that uh, I won't be there because I, I'm get uh, picked too high is definitely one of the most humbling things. Something I work 
my tail off for like I said the past four years and to see all my um, all this stuff coming to fruition is definitely a, a great feeling. Talking to Bradley Chubb again ACC Defensive Player of the Year unanimous first team All-American selection this year. I did see in that Notre Dame game uh, that a couple of times I, I believe you actually dropped back into coverage and I was even screaming out there from your side of it saying why would you ever drop this guy in coverage? <laughs> is it Now is this something you never really want to see happen to you in the NFL that they would actually drop you off in coverage and just let you rush? I mean, uh, throughout college, I did it a lot, so I'm, I'm comfortable with it, but uh, I definitely like rushing the passer. I definitely like getting after it, so um, it's one of those things that if I had to do it, I, I will do it. I won't complain, but uh, my mindset is, is rushing the passer for sure. Well, well, speaking of that, as Bradley Chubb is with us, uh, former North Carolina State defensive end, could go with the top two, maybe top five picks in the draft. One team that has a pretty good pass rusher who is very much in the Bradley Chubb sweepstakes would be the Denver Broncos, who pick at five. I want you to listen to what, speaking of pass rushers, yes. Von Miller, who Super Bowl MVP, pretty good pass rusher in his own right, had to say about your game. Listen in. Yeah, he's Khalil Mack and Von Miller put together. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good player. <laughs> yeah, he is, he is a great player, and I would love to have him. You know, I'd love to have him on my team. So when you hear Von Miller say you are a combination of him and Khalil Mack, what does that mean to you? I mean, it's crazy. One of the best to do it in the game right now. Um, well, two of the best to do it in the game right now, and for him to say that is definitely, a, uh, like I said, one of the uh, humbling experience, of course. And um, it's just, uh, it's just great to see that uh, it, all the talent, all the hard work is is not going unnoticed, especially by one of the best to, to do it. Like I said, so um, just to hear him say that is, is is cool. Bradley, is there pressure for expectations of going where you're going to go, and the expectation of what you're expected to do at the next level? Is is sometimes does that get in the way of performance? Uh, not really. Just because I know I know what got me here, so I know that I'm never gonna slack and never gonna um, think I made it because um, my whole li- I got this this chip on my shoulder and my whole life I've been doubted. So I just try to go in there and, and prove everybody wrong. So if you have high expectations, low expectations, I'm just try to prove you prove you wrong and, and do what I know I can do. See, that's why you're different than us because we walk into this radio show and television show every day just trying to set the bar low enough that we yep. can cross it. <laughs> so you're way ahead of us right now where you are in your mental preparation for what's ahead. But this is a weird process, is it not, Bradley? Mm-hmm. Because everything else has been about game tape and film and showing things on the field. And then you get into this, for lack of a better term, seven to eight week extended dance mix job interview. What's been the weirdest part of this process leading up to the draft? Um, the weirdest part, uh, I wouldn't say it's weird, but the crate, like the, the part that I didn't see coming was all the traveling that I've been doing. I mean, I've been on East Coast, West Coast, um, been like all over the place, just, just trying to, do different things and, and go to different teams and just do all this all this stuff. I, I didn't realize I was going to be traveling so much, but it's definitely a fun experience and something I dreamed about, so I can't complain too yeah, much. Just know you'll never have to do a broad jump, a high jump, or a <laughs> cone drill ever again, and yeah. you can actually just play football now. And Bradley, we wish you nothing but the, the best of luck. It's got to be a dream come true when you're going to hear your name called, and uh, I'm sure you're going to have a heck of an impact in the NFL. So really appreciate your time and best of luck. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all for having me on the show. You got it, Bradley. We'll Thanks. talk to you in Dallas, and I'm sure we'll hear your name called very, very soon. You know, again, you talk about players so of his size, of guys that are that edge rusher, edge rusher. But Freak wa- show. watch him play. He's yes. a disciplined football player. You don't just want a guy taking off. Certainly, you want that for the sacks and stuff. He's not but, a one trick pony. Yeah, you need to play within the scheme of the defense. Play your responsibility, and when asked to get after the pass rusher, do that. He does that extremely well in the scheme of the defense. That's how it was one of the most impressed things. And don't drop the guy off into coverage. Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> he's athletic enough to I know do he it. Is. Von Miller actually covered some players plays like that in the AFC Championship in the Super Bowl game that yeah, year. They won it. So never you, you want it, you want to show him off. You're right. You're like Bill <laughs> Cow. You're like Bill Cow. We're talking to Greg Lloyd all those years ago. Rush the Rush quarterback the passer. All right, coming up, we just talked to Bradley Chubb. Up next, we'll ask Mel Kiper Jr. where Chubb is going to go. Next, you're holding up the line, ma'am. What did you say? You're next in line for the water slide, ma'am. Feet forward and enjoy the ride. Okay, dearie, this does look fun. Whee! Oh, you melted me. I've melted. The Wicked Witch of the West on a water slide? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. See what you've done. Oh! Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.